Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope everybody is having a great day. So before I start, I just want to call out my very cool t-shirt, which I got from Singapore. I was in a fin hack, like almost a week long fin hack in Singapore. Uh, that's why I've missed the last two episodes. And I got a very cool swag. So shout out to that customer who did a great job with that fin hack. But yeah, back, back again and excited to talk today. So Rishi, how are you doing? How's your day going? I'm good. How are you? I am good. I'm I'm feeling like my first week back in the UK for like a long period of time. So I'm quite enjoying being at home. Nice. nice, nice. <laughs> which is nice. Which is nice. Uh, but yeah, and I'm excited to talk about today's topic. So let's just get into it. So welcome everyone to the Keys to Edibus Optimization, the show where we share stories, concepts, and solutions to help you unlock your spend at AWS. My name is Steph Gooch and I'm a senior solution architect in the optics team here to help you with your cloud financial management journey. Couple of bits, as always, please, please feel free to put comments, questions in the chat, whether you're watching us live or if you're watching on YouTube, uh, we will be reacting and commenting to all of those things. If you wanna get in touch with us about anything we said on the episode or have any questions, feel free to email cost optimization at amazon.com. We will also be mentioning in the next couple of weeks a couple of fun things that are happening, uh, some future live streams and future events. So make sure you stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel to catch all of that. Right, enough housekeeping. Let's talk about my guest today. Richard, do you want to give your one minute origin story? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much for having me, first of all. Um, good to have you back from Singapore. <laughs> and um, I'm Rishikesh Shaha. You can call me Rushi, so sushi, but starting with an R. It's a very <laughs> nice icebreaker. Sometimes gets people hungry, unfortunately, but that's okay. Um, and I'm a solutions architect on the migration acceleration services team here at AWS. What we do is we do assessments day in, day out. We have a few different complementary ones that we support our customers and partners with. And we're obviously going to talk quite a bit about that. Um, but then the origin story piece, right? Before this, I used to actually be an AWS technical trainer in our training and certification team. So we would deliver courses in the, uh, for myself, it was in the domains of architecting and developing. So it was more of a transition from teaching about something to actually doing it. And, <laughs> and it's been fantastic. Um, I used to be a software developer before that. So even understanding pain points of customers around you know, infrastructure optimization, application optimization and such, something I can relate to more. So good to be here. Awesome. Good, good, nice kind of broad bit of different technical backgrounds, stuff like that. So it'll be a nice, a nice chat today. And so we're going to be talking about uh, the migration evaluation, evaluator. evaluator AWS evaluator. Migration Evaluator. Thank you. This is the full <laughs> title. I was like, evaluation? No, evaluator. Um, we, and we do do evaluation. So you're actually right. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. I, I'm okay. <laughs> okay. Um, evaluator. And what the team does, what they offer, and how you can get involved with them. We're also going to be chatting a bit about migrations in general and about kind of the role of FinOps in that world. So I'm looking forward to kind of diving into this. So with that, let's hear what does this evaluator actually do? Yeah, so AWS Migration Evaluator, um, it's one of the, what, 230 AWS services we have now, 230? <laughs> right, so what we do is we do assessments. And what we assess is customers' on-premises environments. So let's say you're a customer, you're wondering about, hey, I've heard about this whole cloud thing. It sounds fantastic. It's kind of scary. I don't know what, like, how does it even work and such? So oftentimes we have customers who have, not had any experience with AWS. Some customers have had experience with AWS and are on AWS, but then they have other workloads that may still be on-premises. Mm -hmm. We work with them. We understand their on-premises environment. So we have our own collector to collect data because obviously for any type of analysis, we have to start with data, right? So you could either use our agentless collector or a data import template, which is a fancy way of saying an Excel sheet, provide us existing data. And then we take a look at that, we run it through our algorithms, we analyze it, we produce a business case, um, and it includes a variety of different items, right? It includes cost modeling, it includes things like business value. So other than costs, which is mm -hmm. obviously something um, on everyone's minds, 
what are the other benefits of moving to AWS, right? Staff productivity, business agility, sustainability, right? Things like that operational resilience, we are able to calculate dollar amounts based on, you know, revenue, number of employees, things like that. We do a carbon footprint analysis as a part of this. So um, we can tell you, hey, with your on-premises environment, based on the data we collected, based on the power grid subregion your data center resides in, this is your metric tons of carbon dioxide emissions, right? Equivalent emissions, which mm -hmm. is MTCO2E. It's, it's a lot more simpler if you just use the acronym, <laughs> right? So we can do that. We are also able to do things like directional modeling for AWS Elastic Disaster Recovery Service, VMC on AWS. Um, other than that, we are able to also give you EC2 mapping for each one of your servers. So you may be thinking, okay, Rushi, saying all these things, it sounds like a fancy PowerPoint presentation, but how to actually use it, right? Like, yay, yeah, I, I love AWS, but how do I actually use this? So there's raw data as well, right? You can use the EC2 mapping for each one of your servers and actually use that to move to AWS. So it's a lot, but did I tell you my favorite piece? My favorite nice. piece is that, <laughs> I'm not here to sell you anything. It's free. It's it's complimentary. There's no restrictions. You could have five servers, right? There's a lot of SMB customers, small and medium business customers who have very light, you know, on-prem presence. You could have five servers and I'll still help you, right? So that's that's my favorite piece of this uh, of this job, right? I, I'm just here to help you, really. That I love. And the, um, I'm gonna, we've got this new sound that I wanna try and use, which is... <laughs> It's free. That is, it's complimentary. That in itself is one of the things. Someone's ears might perk up to that. Uh, like you said, if you are watching this and you are either kind of halfway moving to the cloud, starting to move to the cloud, wondering what this is all about, this tool is a kind of great way to get your kind of foot in the door, understanding it, and have some people and have some teams from Amazon who have done this before. And I think that's really important with migrations. It's like it can, like you said, it can seem really daunting. And if you haven't done it before, then it's very confusing. I always say, now, I know I've said this before on here, I was like born in the cloud. So I only ever worked with cloud. I went straight from university into a job. We started in AWS. AWS was all I knew. Uh, that's all I kind of worked on. And so when it comes to migrations, I was like, I don't know that bit before. I just, and the same as what I do now is whenever my customers are kind of landing in the cloud is when we can start to help them. Uh, and like you, I love the fact that I'm a free resource to my customers. So <laughs> the same as you, we love to be free, <laughs> which is awesome. So um, what kind of ways does it collect data? Cause you kind of, um, you mentioned yeah. Excel, Excel sheet, but this is like an agentless collector, right? Yes. So the ideal way, and just from my experience doing this for the past two years with a bunch of customers, the, the most commonly used option is our agentless collector. The reason is in the name, it's agentless, right? So all you need is a Windows server. You install the collector on it. You either provide it vSphere read-only credentials or we can collect also via WMI and SNMP. The point here is to collect data about the infrastructural environment for, we recommend a week of collection and the collector mm -hmm. would collect data points every 15 minutes for utilization metrics around CPU and memory, right? And when you try to do any type of right sizing, right? When you're trying to understand the environment better, these data points are very, very important and useful. So let's say you just use an Excel sheet. You may have that data, but it would be very rare to have granular data down to 15 minute intervals over an extended yeah. period of time, right? Yeah. So. No, that's, it's a great point. And the, you're right. Like if you have it to hand, maybe you're super well versed with uh, what's going on in your infrastructure and that's great. But if not, you need that helping hand. This is the way to do it. So guys, if you're watching now, uh, has anybody recently migrated? Let us know in the chat. Is there something or have you used a migration tool either? Or are you going to let us know what's going on in the chat? So one other question before we kind of move on to a little bit more about the migrations. Um, what happens after a customer kind of uses this tool? What does the pathway look like? Yeah, so what we really help our customers with is obviously giving them information around how their infra would look like on AWS, but also getting them out of the analysis paralysis, right? Where they maybe don't even have any information around their infra or how that looks like on AWS before they did the assessment. But now they're prepared to at least take a look at and understand how that's going to look like on AWS. So 
with most customers, what happens is that their account teams hold their hands. They take a look at, uh, obviously, because they have information like uh, what would be the annual recurring revenue and things like that. There's oftentimes credits and things um, as such. If you have ever heard of the migration exertion program, I'm sure you have. It's a very, very common uh, nomenclature around AWS. But Do you want to even... give people a, a quick summary yeah. of what that is? Just in case they have... Yeah. So if I'm to summarize migration exertion program, it is essentially a way for customers to move to AWS while avoiding double costs. Because when you're moving to AWS, what happens is you obviously have to pay for your on-prem resources, but you also have to pay for AWS resources. So mm -hmm. AWS has a program that helps you with credits and such, avoid those costs and reduce them to a certain extent, right? And there's things like partner cash and such as well. If, for example, you need a partner to handhold you and you know do some migration for you, it's a part of this and such. Nice, yeah. The uh, But don't forget, I think just to go off on a slight tangent from the map conversation, uh, when I was at the London summit, I had I was working on the RC Architect booth and I had someone run up to me, well, not run, but they came and talked to me and they were like, so uh, my credits are going to run out uh, and I don't know what to do. And this poor person seemed very panicked because they realized that I've been having all this stuff for free and well, free. And then now they're going to start paying for stuff. So if you are going to do any of these kind of credits or map credits, like please, please make sure that you are doing what Rishi said, like right size, like be aware of what you're building, check it. And we might go into some of that in a minute, but that is something that you should make sure you're doing. So don't just rely on credits because sometimes they end and so you want to make sure that you know what you're spending money on but yeah um so going into um more of the migration you talked about right sizing so how does this tool kind of help people do that right sizing and also work out like what infrastructure they actually need yeah so the most important piece of right sizing is the data right and the more granular the data the more accurate the data the better the right sizing what mm -hmm. happens is that the algorithms we have go through each one of the servers, the data that was collected. So inventory data, like number of vCPUs, storage, memory, things like that, utilization data around the CPU and memory utilization metrics, and time in use data. So how long was the server actually turned on for? If it was turned off the entire time, should you be putting that resource on AWS and you know getting into reserved instances or something like that? Probably not, because again, things like on demand, right? You, you would just pay for what you're using on AWS. So if you need a server two hours a month, you would just turn it on for two hours and turn it off. That's it. Mm -hmm. So the algorithm takes all of this into account. Then it finds the best EC2 match. So the best fit, lowest cost EC2 match for each one of the servers, and then creates that matrix. And then we do the cost modeling and the analysis on that. Right, And for any servers that have utilization, CPU utilization, let's say less than 5% for the entire collection period, right? We are saying seven days, 15 minute data points for the entire collection period, less than 5% CPU utilization metric. We call them zombie machines, right? <laughs> so if you ever see zombie machines in our assessments, we'll obviously explain you what they are, but we call them zombie machines because they're really not doing anything, right? And they're, they're very good candidates for just turning on for how much ever time you need them for on AWS, right? Whether that's two hours a week, two hours a month, once a quarter, right? Just pay as you mm -hmm. go. Yeah, and this is where you open things up for like scheduling resources and maybe using spot for those kind of things uh, and exactly. transitioning it into even more cost efficiency. So it becomes more sophisticated than I guess a classic lift and shift. To go off for something we didn't really talk about before uh, was when you do this kind of review, I don't know this. So uh, do you look at what applications are often on these machines or is that a kind mm -hmm. of side part? So that's a, very, that's a very good question because what happens is when we are taking a look at infrastructure, especially in the early stages, now, everything I mentioned earlier on the call about all the analysis we do, right, from the business value piece to sustainability to VMC on AWS, DRS, all of that, it can be a lot of information for customers. <laughs> so what happens is that technically there's two pathways to doing this, right? From our perspective, if you use the agentless collector, because it's agentless, it is not able to look inside the VMs. It is 
a feature as such because it's meant to be very security friendly. You don't have to mm -hmm. install anything on all servers in scope. If you wanted application level data, there's two options there. One is a server dependency mapping feature within our own collector, which uses TCP connection data to map out which servers are communicating with other servers over TCP and such, right? And if you need to actually look inside these servers, then AWS has this very awesome application discovery service where you have agent-based collectors that can collect that type of information. For the assessment itself, because we are primarily doing EC2 mapping, cost modeling, and we already provide them with all this information, at the initial stages, it's not application focused, but then that's usually the next step, right? Where you try to figure out, okay, I'm going to do a POC on AWS, right? I'm going to try to build a proof of concept. What is that going to look like? Or what is my migration wave planning going to look like? So that's usually a next follow-up step on that. Okay, that makes sense. Because some of the conversations I've been having recently is when people are lifting and shifting and they have these applications that are like, the, the, uh, the third party has just told me this is the instance size that I need. And they... Uh, very nervous to change that. So the problem I always find with this is, and reminder guys, I haven't been an engineer for a long time, um, is that when that happens, they put it on the box, they set it up and then it's just left running. And it's normally like two sizes too big, but because the, the kind of vendor told them that was the right size, they're a bit skeptical of like resizing. Do you see that happen a lot? And do you have those conversations with customers or is that kind of more towards when they get into the cloud? So certain applications and certain different types of appliances and things like that have specific requirements. There's, there's different types of conversations around that. If it's possible to use the utilization data to right size that, I absolutely think we should do that, right? Mm -hmm. Right sizing is all we are about. Love your t-shirt. I wish I had right sizing yeah. here as well, but I have a AWS logo, so I think I'm covered there. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah. Uh, Optimizing around specific appliances and such is usually a post conversation because that would be looking at a specific section of your workload, seeing if that still makes sense. What else can you do in terms of infrastructural changes and such with that? But I, I do have a question for you, even from this right sizing piece, right? In terms of FinOps, mm -hmm. I know that you obviously have a lot of understanding and knowledge around FinOps. <laughs> What are your thoughts on doing that around migrations and even relating to this, right? How, how would you manage your finances as such, right? Cloud financial management. Yeah, the like role, the kind of role of FinOps in migrations is something that people are asking more about recently. And it's quite an interesting thought because like I said, what happens sometimes is people move to the cloud and when we give them credits, they focus on speed rather than cost. And then further down the line, they suddenly realize, oh, I've been spending quite a lot of money on this new cloud bill, while I still also probably have on-prem running at the same time. So you're kind of doubling your spend. And then people start to ask that question, is moving to the cloud really relevant? Like, should I have done this if I've made like a big mistake? And the answer is no, don't panic. <laughs> uh, but what we see is, is kind of making sure that when you're doing that, sometimes speed is important. And it's like, I want to get stuff in the cloud as fast as possible. And then you don't focus on the cost. And I I can kind of understand that in a perfect world, you would set up all of the correct infrastructure, provisioning rules, SCPs, policies, like all the different things you need beforehand. But that's not, we don't always live in that kind of dream situation. So one thing that if you are listening to this and you're thinking, I do want to, I'm starting to migrate, like what can I put in place at the start? Maybe a couple of things of like three top things I would do. Number one, like get your cost visibility set up, whether that is just Cost Explorer, you're looking at regularly, Kudos dashboards we've spoken about many times, um, or even just the curse, you have access to that data, kind of have that ability to access it. So if you have a question, you know where to go and familiarize yourself with that. There's, uh, I'll, I'll share below uh, when we do the show notes on YouTube, some of the episodes that are good. But if you go onto the playlist of C, there's loads of information about how you can see your spend. So number one, get to understand your costs is really important. I think to set up things like budgets and anomaly detection, always a basic one, just to make sure you understand, like if anything starts to spin crazy, because if people are migrating to the clouds and it's a new thing, they might not, not necessarily they might not understand, but it might be an accident. There might be things that are set up that spin out of control. So always kind of set those things up. And then 
as much as you can start to do what Rishi was saying, like the lift and shift stuff, we move, try and be more sophisticated. So when you are, when you have moved an application to the cloud, congratulations, well done, you have shifted. Go back and actually look at it. Like don't just be like, okay, next. You have to go on to the next one, yes, but see if you can carve out that little bit of time to maybe even combine it. So if you're doing patching reviews or availability reviews or whatever, or resiliency re reviews, add in a cost one, just kind of check, okay, is this is this costing the amount that we expected it to? Uh, and, and if it's not, why? And if are there other things that are costing money that we didn't anticipate happening? Uh, and so you can start to focus on that. So that's what I would I would kind of do with that. So uh, thank you for asking. That's a, uh, a nice way to- Good recommendations. Kind of I would completely yeah. agree. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, so speaking of kind of customers moving more into the cloud, let's talk about some of the customers that you kind of have worked with or seen success stories with this. Let's inspire some other people to continue. So do yeah. you have any good kind of customer stories? I, I have some top of mind. Um, there's yeah. a lot of customers I can't talk about, but there's yeah. a few that I can talk about. So we'll talk about them. So we did a migration of valid assessment with auction.com. They are an online real estate marketplace. And their challenge was that they were rapidly growing. So obviously as a company, they had at that point, seven data centers, they had thousands of servers in those data centers. But because they were rapidly growing, they needed a solution that had a lot more scalability and agility. And mm -hmm. after doing a ton of research and analysis, they picked AWS, right? And that's where we kind of came in. We supported them with a migration of valor assessment. We took a look at all the servers, the inventory, the utilization, the time in use. We did right sizing. We provided them with a business case, EC2 matches and all of that. And as a result of that, they were able to achieve a savings of 34%. Um, wow. by right-sizing onto AWS. So again, it's it's not just moving to the cloud, right? It's it's right-sizing to AWS, as mm -hmm. you said, it's more sophisticated than just a lift and shift. And is that so, 30% like in comparison to on-prem to moving to AWS? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Wow, okay. Yeah, the cloud is cheaper. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if you do it the right way. If you do it the right way. <laughs> if you treat it like another data center, I, I don't even know what to say. The, there, amount, right? the amount of times people do that, right? I mean, you, you must see it more yeah. than I do where people kind of get this thing saying, I thought the cloud was cheaper. It's like, yeah, if you if you build it right, uh, then if you build it, they will come. No, that's not the right expression for today, but uh, yeah. anyway, sorry, continue. No, no, and I, I completely agree with that, right? And um, to add on to that, it, it's very interesting even around this conversation, right? The, the opportunities that AWS presents by right-sizing. I used to work at a bank before, and as is very standard in the banking industry, we, you know, just there's a lot of over provisioning of all mm -hmm. resources because if you work at a bank, you find out really, really quickly that nothing makes people more unhappy than not being able to access their money. Right? So you <laughs> want to make sure that that never happens, right? So you have all this infra, but then if you use something like migration of validator to actually right size before you move to AWS. That is a lot more efficient. That saves you a lot of costs. And it is really the right way of using AWS, right? So there's also this other customer that I wanted to talk about. They are Coke Industries. They are the largest privately, one of the largest privately held companies in the US. Um, mm -hmm. And what happened was that they had six data centers, the standard usual reasons for moving to AWS. And we did a migration evaluator assessment with them. And in this case, on-prem versus AWS, we were able to, through our analysis, find savings of up to 48%, which is significant, yeah. right? 48%. And uh, the really cool piece is that their cloud, pref their, their cloud platform leader actually co-presented with our general manager, so of, of, our, uh, of our team, of Migration Evaluator, at reInvent in 2019, right? Just talking about their journey, AWS journey, and how we were able to help and such. So good success nice. stories. Yeah, there's the there's the video, guys. So go and check that out if you are wanting to learn about like some, some deep experience of someone who's done it. Because I think a lot of that stuff is, this is a really good opportunity for customers, uh, case studies, blogs, like videos, to showcase like how to do it. Even if like some of my customers are, 
they're they're in the cloud, like they're spending money in the cloud, but they've still got more workloads to go. And I think I'm trying to remember what one of them was at a really high, like something like 20 applications a month or something they had to migrate. And to me, that's I think they're they're a big company, so they have a lot of people working on it. It's just not one person just like moving stuff. Um, but these things are quite challenging. And so there can be a lot of moving parts and uh, a lot of stuff. So seeing someone who's already done it, I think is uh, is a good one. And so have you got any kind of like tips or words of wisdom? Like if someone is starting out in this, what's something maybe you maybe there's like two ways to answer this. Has anyone done the thing that you've seen that was a bit silly that you want to be like, guys, don't do that slash. Is there anything anyone did that was like really well done? that you want to kind of highlight from your experience? I'm going to focus more on the well done. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> the, the silly piece would be to move to AWS without leveraging the AWS migration evaluator team, just because talking about the well done ones, the two customer stories we talked about today, there's more, right? But we obviously only have a few more minutes, mm-hmm. is that it's a complimentary assessment, right? What we do is we, again, we take a look at your servers, your attached storage, and then we also have a storage assessment, which we kind of combine with this migration evaluator offering to take a look at your attached storage, any storage appliances you have, right? To map onto services, onto block, file and object storage services onto AWS. So the smart thing to do would be to just reach out to us. We do an assessment and even apart from the AWS piece, it just helps you understand your environment better, right? That's Plain and simple. And once you have the data, you make a data-based decision to move to AWS and how to move to AWS. What services do you map to? What do you provision and things as such, right? Rather than taking everything you have on-prem and just replicating the same on AWS. That's not really data-based because you most likely, based on data, most environments on-premises are over-provisioned, right? So the smart thing to do would be to just reach out to us do an assessment. And once you have the data, we can move to AWS. You obviously also understand your environment better. Yeah, I think that's the simple, it's the call to action. So I'll, I'll, uh, I'll post up this, this channel. So- we have that public link. If you already have an account manager, right, for a company, you could just reach out to them as well. They can internally request this as well. And again, I'm not here to sell you. <laughs> it's a free assessment. We are really just here to help, right? So. That's what I love yeah. about my job. Yeah, I'm you, just uh, providing this advice that hopefully people watching today have found useful. And if you have, as always, um, just feel free to drop us a note if you've really been, if you want to let us know that you are doing this and be like, oh, I, I watched this episode of Keys and that's how I got it, then cost optimization Amazon.com is a great way to do that. Right. Okay. That's all we have time for today, guys. So thank you so much for joining. Thank you, Rishi, for joining today. Uh, next week, we're having a change in schedule. Uh, basically, one of our guests can't come. And so we're going to do a bit of a fun episode. So I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, we haven't decided yet. Savannah's going to come back on, I think, and we might have a bit of a, a quirky one. If there's something you want uh, us to fill this gap with, then again, email, tweet me, and let me know or pop it in the comments below. But yeah, otherwise, have a good rest of your week, guys, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>